Transcribed from Hollywood. She's walking down the aisle, another Woodbury bride. She uses Woodbury soap because it's gentle and mild. And her hands are smooth and lovable from Jergens Lotion Care. It's the lotion that's preferred by more women everywhere. Jergens Lotion and Woodbury Soap present the Luella Parsons Show. What crooner is Hollywood-bound to decide whether or not to marry the girl? What romantic young glamour star has stolen Marlena Dietrich's boyfriend? What film star's ex-mate is bypassing alimony payments to buy hay for thoroughbreds? You will be given the answers by your Jurgens Woodbury reporter, Luella Parsons, motion picture editor of International News Service and the Hearst Papers. Luella will also have as her guests Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. But first, the Hollywood headlines. Luella Parsons. Hello from Hollywood to all of you, and now for my first exclusive. The Robert Mitchums expect a baby in February. They have two sons, 7 and 11, and Bob says now they've ordered a girl. Immediate steps are being taken in Turkey to repeal that law which made it necessary for Virginia Bruce, blonde motion picture actress, to divorce her husband, Ali Ipar, so that he could become an officer in the Turkish army. Ipar's rich and influential family is back of this repeal. Meanwhile, Virginia's living with her in-laws. The young romance of Vic Damone and Joan Benny, Jack's 17-year-old daughter, has hit a snag. However, Vic will spend his 10-day furlough in Hollywood, and then he'll try to work out his heart problems. Friends of Vic and Joan's insist this is just a lover's quarrel and not serious. But the truth is, at the moment, they're not even writing letters. The talk of London is that Elizabeth Taylor is madly in love with Michael Wilding. Handsome Michael has swept Liz off her feet with his attentions. Liz took Wilding away from Marlena Dietrich, which is some taking. Dagmar, who spotlighted into fame as a TV star and carried her salary to phenomenal figures, will be investigated by the Wage Stabilization Board. The government wants to know just what makes Dagmar worth all that money. Well, maybe her fans will tell them. Over 100 Hollywood personalities leave September 30th to visit towns throughout the nation. They'll meet the press, go on the radio, and attend receptions. This is all a part of the campaign of the Council of Motion Picture Organizations known as COMPO. Every studio is united with the theaters in this effort to stimulate business by introducing Hollywood celebrities to the public. Fortunately, this year the movies are unusually good. Lynn Berry, who underwent a minor operation, came home yesterday from the hospital. Her ex-husband, Sid Luft, who has been in Europe with Judy Garland, still owes Lynn nearly $3,000 back alimony. Now Lynn hears Luft has been in Ireland buying racehorses. And if he has that much money, Lynn wonders why he can't pay what he owes her. And that ain't hay. Anna Roosevelt, only daughter of FDR, who has been seriously ailing for the last two years, has gone to Hyde Park to recuperate. She'll live there indefinitely. Anna is such a vital personality, it's difficult to visualize her as being sick. But I'm happy to say she's better. If their beautiful nine-pound baby boy doesn't bring Kay and Brad Crawford together... Nothing can, and so far there has been no reconciliation. Brad was with Kay when the baby was born and has been at the hospital constantly. But he and his wife are miles apart still, which is really too bad, since this is their first baby. Their other boy is adopted. Phil Goldstone, one of Hollywood's richest bachelors, is marrying Faye Greenwood at Santa Barbara tomorrow. She is an interior decorator, and Phil made a fortune producing pictures. Errol Flynn is in San Francisco today resting, but he wasn't too sick when he was in Korea to talk business. He obtained the financial aid of a Japanese film company, and he'll film the life of Commodore Perry. Well, Von Monroe certainly gets a break. He'll take Roy Rogers' place as Republic's top singing star, as well as Gene Autry's spot at the Madison Square Garden Rodeo. Herb Yates, head of Republic, who brought both Rogers and Autry to fame as a great believer in singing cowboys. Returns at the box office certainly prove how right Herb is. From Acapulco comes word that Haiti Lamar plays golf every day with Ted Stauffer, her bridegroom. Well, Ted is the only one of Haiti's four husbands who could get her to be athletic. I hear she swims every day, too. Must be love. 
On the subject of Hades, she's plenty smart on the money side, too. The actual figures realized that the auction of the possession she didn't want brought $185,000. She plans to invest this in Mexican real estate. Latest Hollywood nightclub battle. The Macamba is suing Ciro's and over monkeys. Charlie Morrison of Macomble has slapped a suit on Herman Hover of Ciro's for $26,000, claiming that the two monkey stars, Tippy and Cabina, belong to him and not to the rival nightclub. Charlie says the monks are funnier than Martin and Lewis and work for peanuts. Now I've heard everything. Margaret Ettinger, one of our best-known public relations women, failed to give me a story about her sale. I hear when Maggie was driving back from San Francisco, she hit a porcupine, and when she stopped, there were 197 quills in her tires. Fortunate he didn't bump into Maggie. After Beverly Long, youthful star of Susan, playing at the Circle Theater here, received such glowing press notices, her boyfriend Jerry Bassett got worried. He's in the Air Corps stationed at Oklahoma, so he flew to Hollywood and put a ring on her finger. They'll marry in six weeks, and that's one way to keep the wolves from whistling around the stage door. And now, Marvin Miller. Want to look your best and save money, too? Then hurry to your favorite cosmetic counter first thing tomorrow, because Jergens is offering to give you, at no extra charge, wonderful new Woodbury shampoo when you buy the regular 50-cent size Jergens lotion. You get both for only 49 cents. So keep your hands lovely with Jergens Lotion, your hair gleaming and easy to manage with Woodbury Shampoo. Get this tremendous beauty bargain right away. She uses Jergens Lotion. It's so perfect for hand stars. Use it seven to one, cause Jergens Lotion's so grand. Let your hands be smooth and lovable from Jergens Lotion Care. It's the lotion that's preferred by more women everywhere. Now, here is the talk of the town. Our guests today are two young men whose careers have not only been sensational, but phenomenal. Martin and Lewis have been a solid click in every medium they've attacked. Nightclub, radio, pictures, and television. So now let's meet the boys one at a time. First, that dashing personality who combines charm and savoir-faire with a reckless contempt for the conventions, a suave and sophisticated character who is utterly irresistible, though dangerous, to lovely women. Well, thank you very much, Luella. (laughs) Well, actually, Jerry, I was speaking of Dean Martin. Well, thank you, Luella. I want you to know the invitation to appear on your show was one of the nicest things that ever happened to us in Hollywood. It's my pleasure, boys. Believe me, because the team of Martin and Lewis has given the whole entertainment world a refreshing uplift. But truly, their success isn't so surprising. Jerry here has grease paint in his blood. I got blood? (laughs) Jerry, I was just trying to tell a little about your background. I understand your folks were in vaudeville. Yeah, my mother was an acrobat, and my father was a weightlifter. My father could lift a big dumbbell in his teeth. <laughs> Imagine him carrying Jerry around in his teeth. I can't. Who is this character? Who let him in? Are you listening to me, Dean? Ah, oh, pipe down, squirrel bait. Luella, do you think the Jergens Lotion people would mind if I got in a plug for Hal Wallace's productions and Paramount? Yeah, I'm sorry, Dean. I think they would mind. Well, okay, so I won't tell your listeners we've completed two new pictures for Mr. Wallace. That's my boy and the stooge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dean, you know, that's just about as subtle as one of your fast and furious routines. And now I want to ask you boys something. Which of the different media you've appeared in do you think has the greatest hold on the public? I would not like to say until my new television receiver hits the market. <laughs> well, Jerry, do you mean you've invented a new TV receiver? Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. You can tune in ten channels. Ten? Well, yeah, on nine you get programs. On the tenth you get a hat full of popcorn. Ah! <laughs> Important if true. <laughs> but something tells me it isn't true. By the way, I never did know how you two met each other. Just how did this thing come about? Well, about five years ago, Jerry was appearing in a nightclub in Atlantic City, and the owner got the bright idea of putting me with him to bolster the act. That is substantially correct, Luella, except it is completely loused up. 
They put me with Dean to bolster his act. <laughs> well, whichever way it was, I'm glad it happened, and so is the American public. Offhand, I just can't recall any team in show business that's become so famous so fast. But maybe it's just the contrast. One character so proper and so handsome, and the other so completely zany. Hey, how about that, Dean? You gonna let her call you a zany? Oh, you're <laughs> twisted like a corkscrew. Straighten him out, will you, Luella? <laughs> now, boys, I did say one of you was handsome. But I'm not gonna put myself on the spot by saying which one. Suppose we just put it up to your motion picture audiences. That would be taking unfair advantage. <laughs> now, don't you worry, Jerry. You've got a face that grows on people. You're right, Luella. It certainly grew on him. <laughs> grew on him. Grew on him. Grew on him. Yeah. I think you're a big man, don't you? Just remember, you ain't the only lover boy on this team. I had a romantic partner, Stooge, myself. I kissed a girl, too. You know, Jerry, your career is becoming more amazing every moment. So what's amazing? They just built a part to fit my character. They did the same thing, and that's my boy, a football story. Gave me a part to fit my character. Yep, I did the tackling, and he was the dummy. <laughs> there you go again. Always give him with the insults. Don't try to be a big man with me just because your name is first. Well, there's a reason why they put it first. Oh, now, boys, please. This is an interview, not a sparring match. Well, he's always making a big thing out of it because the Martin is first and Martin and Lewis. Actually, it don't mean a thing. Ha, ha. There's plenty of teams I can mention where the second name is just as important as the first name. Name one. Hagen Hagen. Ha, 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 ha. Dean, will you promise me you'll always be my friend? Well, sure, Jerry. No matter what happens, you'll stick by me through thick and thin? I sure will, Jerry. And you'll shake on it? Certainly, here. This is one of the most touching things I ever saw. Jerry, why are you so anxious to make sure Dean will remain your friend? Well, seeing how he roused me around as a friend, I hate to think what he'd do as an enemy. Oh, now, Jerry... But really, it's been fun, Luella. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, and we're only kidding, Luella. So long. So long, and thank you, boys. And you can be sure I'm just one of the millions who are looking forward to seeing That's My Boy in the Stooge. Good luck to you both, and good night. If your complexion isn't as youthfully soft as you'd like, switch to Woodbury, the soap with the beauty cream ingredient. Woodbury facial soap really is different. Because the Woodbury Beauty Cream ingredient is intended to help replace the natural oils you wash away. Try it and see how exquisitely smooth it leaves your complexion. And once you discover how mild and soothing it feels on your skin, you'll want the big bath size Woodbury, too. She's walking down the aisle, another Woodbury bride. She uses Woodbury soap because it's gentle and mild. It has a beauty cream ingredient, you like it all so much. Ask for Woodbury soap and have the skin you love to touch. Now, here is last minute news. As soon as Ann Jeffries gets her annulment, she's going to marry Bob Sterling, ex-husband of Ann Southern. Bob flew out from New York just to ask Ann the question. In New York, a few hours ago, actor John Loder escaped unhurt when his car was struck by an automobile, which police said had been stolen. With Loder was his leading lady, Sally Brophy. Tomorrow morning, after many delays, Catherine Grayson will file suit for divorce from Johnny Johnston. She'll charge mental cruelty. I'm leaving on my vacation next week, and while I'm away, I'm very grateful to Joan Crawford, Dorothy Lemore, and Jane Wyman, my good friends and my daughter, Harriet, who will bring you the news in my absence. I'll be back September 9th. Until then, be sure and listen to my famous guests. Do you realize how often you turn on the faucet at your kitchen sink and what that means to your hands? But constant wetting needn't spoil them if you give them Jergens care. Keep an extra bottle of Jergens lotion handy in the kitchen. Use it after every chore. You'll find your hands stay soft and smooth as satin. It's a quick, easy care, too, and not expensive. Jergens costs only ten cents to a dollar, plus tax. This is the Well Parsons saying that's all for tonight. But next week, Dorothy Lamar will see you with the news. And you'll also hear me in a recorded interview with Thelma Ritter and Monty Woolley. And this is Marvin Miller saying good night for Jergens Lotion for soft, smooth, romantic hands and Woodbury Facial Soap for the skin you love to touch. Transcribed from Hollywood, America is sold on ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.